I don't know if y'all remember the Chevy Monte Carlo, the one that had a mount of its own. Uh, it was running, the injectors were screwed up, but this is that vehicle. All right, it's my cousin's car. That's fine, it's been fixed, it's been running fine since engine-wise, but one thing that had been needed was a transmission. So here we are. I put a new transmission in it from AutoZone. He, got a, he bought his own remanufactured transmission, and uh, it worked like it looked great. It's in there and it worked, it transitions, but the problem with this transmission is it only goes to one and two. So it only shifts to second gear, will not go to third and fourth gear. And when it downshifts, it shifts fine, back down to two and one. Goes in reverse grade, goes into neutral, goes into drive fine, all of it feels good. It just doesn't shift beyond second gear. No codes present. And um, just to give you the basic rundown of what I'm thinking, I think we got a computer related problem. Because, again, there's no codes. Computer doesn't have the intellect to be able to determine that there's a fault beyond what it automatically knows. So it can't know something that it doesn't know if that makes any sense because computers don't develop um, it, it, it doesn't have any forethought it only knows a loop system it only knows what it's told to do and if it forgets what it's told to do then there's no way it can know that it has a problem so i'm thinking the solenoid in the old transmission burnt up which we're gonna have to test and that is what caused the transmission in the new transmission not to work. So I'm thinking because before he had a delinquency in transitioning from first to second to third and fourth. I think it was only from second to third or something like that and beyond. But that delinquency is what caused codes to manifest with incorrect gear ratio or codes pertaining to um, transitioning related issues those are the codes that we had before now with this new transmission now i didn't know anything after that i know we needed to put a transmission in when it had issues transitioning but he'd been driving it around for a while and it come to find out he said it got to a point where it just wouldn't go above a certain speed and it sat for about a year got a transmission got it in there here we are let me show you what i got so we got engine torque pulled up. I don't think that's relevant, but mainly we got the input speed sensor, output speed sensor, command gear. This is one of the biggest things I've been looking at and it's been in my subconscious since I've been monitoring the shift sequence since this issue manifested. This is like a desired versus actual kind of PID here. So it, it's in gear one, but when it's ready to transition to gear two, you will have like that split second delay before the vehicle physically shifts into another gear. So it's gonna say command gear two, desired, and then you'll feel that transmit transition into gear two, which is the actual carry out of the uh, actual action being carried out. So here's my thing. It only shows two. And it never, it, w w driving, it goes from one, we're in one, and when it transitions to two, it goes to two, but it only goes up to two. And I'm going to show you that. And uh, I wish I could show you the PIDs with the speed. Let me take this one out and just show you the mile per hour vehicle speed. And hopefully, oh, this will help. Ignore these out at the bottom. I do think I need that, though. Um, so we got vehicle speed, command gear, one, two, two, three, solenoid, and um, IMS is the oh, man internal module shift or something like that, module selector. So basically the gear shift, if I change it, it's in drive four, internal module selector, I think that's what it's considered, but it reflects, reverse park it works go all the way down to one it works now another key thing also besides it not going into 
the appropriate gear and drive, if I leave it in one, it transitions automatically. So it goes from one to two. It shifts when it wants to, even though I'm forcing it in one. So this module reflects that it's in drive one, but the computer's still doing what the hell it wanna do. So that's what made me think is the computer, despite where I'm putting this gear selector. And I, I, I just don't have any control manually shifting it. I don't. So I'm looking at this command state would not go beyond two. If I go to one, it does what it wants to do. So that is a clear indication that we have a brain problem, but I need to test those solenoids and make sure. I do want to look at the solenoid, the shift state. And um, I wonder, I wonder if that'll help me determine, you know, which solenoid it is. But I, I'm just curious. I can still look at the shift parameters. I'm gonna leave this here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a drive around the block. We're back. This is the old transmission. This out. I'm going to test these terminals for the 4T65E. This is the name of this transmission. Before I forget, we're going to test these terminals. Look at the current ramp and see how uh, smooth the ascending current ramp is. And we're going to check the voltage for the inductive induction spike because it's a solenoid we should see a spike when deactivating the solenoid and I'm just kind of curious to see what it looks like but the current ramp will definitely give me all the details I need when gener generating what power I can't even get it out right when energizing those solenoids so we're gonna check the torque converter one two and two to three solenoids this is the there's a common theme with the e terminal all right let me show you what it looks like so here's what the terminals look like i'm gonna again i'm gonna show you what that looks like uh through identifix so there's a common with the power on e terminal and the only thing i gotta do is ground the circuit out which will energize those solenoids <sighs> So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right on. You have to ignore my chair. Now I got my battery here. And uh, before I do all that, why not just do a ohm test for those who don't have an oscilloscope. I don't like ohm tests because they're just not that reliable. To be honest, they lie to you and they're very deceiving. So we're gonna check, make sure we have some ohmage. 
and we're going to go again since e is the common let me put this right here i got my alligator clamp here since e is common let me put an alligator clamp there and i can put this on red all i gotta do is simply just probe the control wire and I should get a value assuming well if one of them short the ground and it'll create an overall problem that's why it's honestly best to test them individually but this is these are inside and I don't feel like taking this pan off and making a mess so let's go to shift solenoid one and two which is going to be terminal a at the top and let's see what value we get I don't know the value what they're supposed to be from a fat respect, but I'd imagine, you know, most solenoids are around like 16, 14, something like that, because they have to ground out. This has 22 ohms. So that's solenoid shift uh, one to two. Let's go to two to three. And uh, that is making 22 ohms also. Let's go to the TCC torque converter. That's 11 ohms. Interesting. Now, I don't know if they're all the same. I would have to go like on Rock Auto and see if those solenoids are identical because they can be the same solenoid. Um, and, uh, well, yeah, that's it. They just all could be just be the same solenoid um, and, and they're interchangeable. Now, being that one and two to two to three is going to get frequently used, I can understand the resistance being a little higher or off. Uh, and uh, torque converter control lockup isn't going to be used on a regular basis. So, I mean, I, and I don't know if, if like the sequence, I didn't, be honest, I didn't go in depth. But I'd imagine they are what they state. One to two shift, two to three. And probably when it locks up, they're probably off were all on I don't know but I'd imagine they probably shut down Chevy's might be just a simplistic type system so the ohms are fine logically ohms law with uh, more current well with more resistance you get less current so we have more we have less resistance on the TCC so technically we should have more of a higher inductive spike on this one but I don't think it's gonna be like blatant but I don't know I don't know I'm not the smartest guy in the world let me get my oscilloscope hooked up let me get transfer this to my 12 volt on the battery and let's see what we got on the um, I think I'm gonna use the let's do the voltage first cuz I, I, I think it'll be more interesting to do the current ramp last. So let's check the inductive spike. All right, so this is the setup. I have my, this is probably gonna be a little confusing because the only thing I'm testing is the, we're gonna measure the voltage spikes. So we're gonna see the pull down and the surge or the surplus in voltage. So I do have my ground as my common here to my positive. So when I do supply ground, I'm going to see um, we're just we're just going to see uh, probably a, a grab and a hold, uh, probably the ground, and probably when I detach the value, then we'll see that inductive spike. That make any sense so I'm gonna have to hold it on there and then pull this out and capture it on the waveform there so we'll see right, we're gonna go to number one first so I'm gonna hook up we're gonna see a bias voltage of 12 There's our bias voltage of 12. And if I can get it to hold it. I probably need to put an alligator clamp in here. All 
right, here we go. Uh-oh. Let me get an alligator clamp. Let me get an alligator clamp to hold that on there. The reason why I got on 100 volt is because of the state of health I'll be able to see or when that inducting, inductive spike. So here we go. I'm going to hook up the oscilloscope. We're going to see bias voltage. So it's at bias 12 volts. That's just the back feed. Here I am applying ground, pulling down. I'm going to let off. And it spiked. I probably need to put it up around 200 volts. Ew, that's about as high as it's gonna go. Let's try it again. So we're at our bias voltage. Pull down, drop. That wasn't bad. Pull down. That wasn't bad. I should have, um, it's an invert. 20 to 1. Let's do that. No, it's not going to do it. I did that. I need to um, get my attenuator. It's moving quite a bit. Change it to two seconds. Right, here we go. I had to put the attenuator on there because it was just like so crazy high. The solenoid was making noise and it stopped all of a sudden. This one seems to be shorted out. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Let me see what it looks like. So that's me. detaching the uh, ground signal and it just it just looked erratic it's this thing gotta be shorted out voltage pulls down and this becomes now I'm not as precise as a PCM let me see if I can change the detail I don't know if that's because of me pulling it apart. If I let it cool down, it looks okay. But look at the ridges at the top there. I should have, let me go to 100. It's just like flat lines. I don't know if it's because I got an attenuator up there, but it just kept spiking so high. Some of these here, and this is shift solenoid one, the two. That one looks fine, but it still could be a better spike. But then again, I'm controlling it. There's another one that looks sloppy, and I don't know if that's because of me breaking the connection away or what. I'm just get a few more. Let me go up here to the top. Let's short it out. I think we should get another value of the ohms at this state. Yeah. Look how it spikes there. Look like it shorts before it pulls it down. I wonder how the current ramp would look with this one. 
Let me go to the B and see what that looks like. Let me move this over. Let's see if that clicks. Mm -hmm. yes, that's clicking. B is clicking. And the other one, the other solenoid is shorted out. That looks really good. That looks really good. Yeah, it's kind of questionable, but I mean, that's the variable of me. I mean, again, I'm not a PCM, but this, this, this solenoid is actually energizing. That looks really good. Look how it transitions down like that in comparison to the other one. Well, it just has a nice slow descend. This is how a solenoid is supposed to look. Let's go back to um let's go back to one. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this. Let's go back to one or A. was shorted so let's try it again short it short it let's see so let's zoom in that looks good look at that all that noise afterwards All that ripple. That other one didn't have that. Let's go back in the gallery. Look at that. That was B. This is A. A is shorted. So I wonder if we see that current ramp when we hook up the amp clamp. It's just going to be, it's not going to have a good descend up I'd imagine I mean, it just should like short out and just uh, I zoomed in on that one let's go to the torque converter control so A seems to be shorted uh oh I didn't mean to do that A seems to be shorted B seems to be good let's go to the TCC I think that was at the very bottom go torque control torque converter control it's clicking let's see what this looks like this one works really good not worry too much about the noise because that's probably just me. But look how, look how smooth this looks. It spikes up and then just descends slow. Questionable, but again, I'm 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 doing this. I'm I'm not a computer. I'm not as precise as that. Look how good that looks. That looks so much better. It's very clean. Let me do it in a fast sequence. Should have done all of them like that. Look how good that looks. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Let's go back to one. And I'm gonna do. Oh shoot! Why I do that? I did not mean to do that. Take a snapshot of this. Let's go back to one or A, the one that was shorted. All right. Maybe they'll start working again. No. 
Nope, it's not working. Let's see what this looks like. Remember, we had a lot of ripple. Yeah, look at that. All that right there. Solomon was just not activating. One is shorted. Let's take a resistance value. And again, I had used my 20 to 1 attenuator because it just kept spiking and falling off. Let's take these off here. Let's see what we got. It should be grounded out. No. It's making, uh oh. It's like the circuit's open. circuit is this roaming resistance let me pull this off here I don't know if that had it no I thought it was because I had it hooked up to my source but it's not it's going back down to 22 ohms but like I say the ohms don't mean anything that's why I say resistance value don't mean crap just because it has a decent value doesn't mean the solenoid is working let's Check it out since the ohms drop, but that has a lot to do with heat and, and the temperature. <laughs> Let's try this again. So the ohms are fine. It went back to 22. Shorting. Yeah, still short it. Still short it out. There's a lot going on when I when I disconnect the control wire to ground. And I mean it's just it's lightly just not opening all the way and it's just so much noise right there that like that energy don't have anywhere to go to dissipate let's put the amp clamp to it all right we're getting the amp clamp hooked up just taking off the attenuator i had there so we're going to hook up on the 500 mm, let's go to 200 millivolts so for every 100 millivolts is one amp so we should see it half that way so let's see what happens when we, we got it zeroed yeah let me see if i can do it a little better so let's see what happens here we go it's pulling the current down So low. Why's my current ramp so low? I gotta face him right. Let me try it again. Damn, the current draws so low. I'd imagine it'll pull something close to at least. Like, well, it's probably like 400 millivolts. Let me draw, I got that in half. So let's, we're at 100, let's try 100. So I mean, this is, sir, it's not gonna pull an amp. Probably need to go in like a lot more finer detail. Let's lower it again. Let's go to 50. Yeah. It's just a lot of noise at the very end, which it just the voltage just doesn't have anywhere to go. I mean, and obviously, I mean, it, it falls down to a ground or whatever. It just pulls it down. But there's so much spiking afterwards. Uh -oh. I 
I guess, well, I about to say, I guess because I don't have a ground on the actual case, if, that, if that's the reason why, that it's, it's just a lot of noise in the background. But, um, let me, let me hold it. I mean, I'm, I am slower than what the computer may do. Let me just do a hold right quick. hold it for a second and it just jumps right up this is I don't like that spike there let's save this let's go to B which was working before See what B looks like. Look at that. That's probably when I detach it and kill the current, the flow. I don't know if that, like, You get an initial drive of current, and then I don't know if because of how it try to stabilize and hold, that's probably why we see that little dip, like it want to back off and oscillate, I guess. And then uh, that's me holding it and releasing it, and it starts to dissipate. I need to zero this out, but it, look how much stronger this is the current flow in comparison to the other one let me do a hold look how this jumps up look how immediate it responds Yeah. And I mean, just comparing to the other one, I mean, it it took a while to accept the flow because I mean, this is a good one. I mean, this is me administering instant voltage. The current it just accepts the currents and responds. It wasn't slow like the other one. So normally I would be thinking like, okay, something like this will be shorted out because it's just so instant. But being that, you know, this is a solenoid. I mean, I, I, I guess I'm, I thought wrong evidently, but this is a working one. Unlike the other one, I'm going to go to the torque converter and then we'll take a look at that. But that's why you know we have three different two other solenoids that are that seem to be operating and we can compare the two naturally i'd imagine you know it'll it'll slowly ascend but you know not all circuits are equal I ain't the smartest guy in the world so let's go to the torque converter do a comparison of that and see what see what's in common See what's in common with these waveforms. That one's a lot stronger than the other one too. Look how yeah, look how rapid this is. Same thing. So this so the solenoid has more of a rapid response to the voltage. And um there's our that's got to be like noise from the pental movement and then it stabilizes and then when I release it it just slowly descends 
because that's not my whole time. That's me releasing it from here, and this is just dropping off. It's so sharp, and it's a lot more erect than the previous two. And again, I'm thinking because of age, it just don't get used. But then again, remember, you know, the resistance is lower, and this has a higher current flow. Let's do a hold. Look how sharp that is. Wow. Okay, so that is me holding it. All right, so it does stabilize. I wonder if I do it and hold it longer, what will happen? Let me just do one. interesting i'd imagine it would like hold like the value the current but what's the purpose when there's no more current going to it logically i mean the current already did its thing but then again i'm thinking like voltage okay the current came held and then i mean it's in let me put another channel on here because i want to see what it looks like voltage wise in respect to the current flow Get my other channel hooked up here on 20 volts. Uh, let's put it on here. So the green trace is going to be the voltage. And um, I need to zero that out again. I'm not sure why that's not zeroing out. Screw it. That's weird thrown off Man, my scope shorted out. Dang it. Dang it, man. Um, I, I have nothing hooked up right now. Nothing. I reset it. It just, it won't zero out. Look at it, it's got a mind of its own. That's me applying voltage. Why all tell why? <laughs> oh man, why? I don't know how I short this out. I'm not gonna complain about all tail products because I, I didn't do. I had the ground hooked up here, and then the other part of the ground hooked up here. So when I would apply power, like apply ground, I apply ground through the tools. No different from any other signal. It's ground side. I mean, it, it, unless because of that shorted solenoid, it sends power back through the lead and short it out internally. <laughs> Dang it, man. I gotta buy a new one. That thing's like $500, too. This is not the first one I've had fail on me, but... This is all tail weakness. I'm gonna be honest. I'm pissed. So... Anyway, what did we learn? What did we learn? 
Not that I probably should have bought other products besides Alltel, but I mean, I, I really I got a new BNC cable because I had some in the house because he's short out, I just buy them. And yeah, still is no go. I wonder if it just need an update or something. Maybe I have to call and link up with the techs in like New York or something like that, and they can probably just link into the system and update it. But I I shouldn't have to do that, man. I just I'm not gonna complain. Anyway, uh, obviously the solenoid shorted out, sawed on the current ramp, and I don't even know if that was pretty much having any trying to truth value because I mean the current ramp wasn't holding. It should have held logically. It should have. So, because when I went to go te test the voltage, and this one my voltage didn't work like it was supposed to. Because, I mean, when you apply current, it's supposed to go up and hold. And that's why I started doubting myself. That's why, let me look at the voltage value. And being that the component was shorted out, I guess that's what, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't understand. Either way, that solenoid had good resistance or compatible resistance with solenoid B. Um, the waveform showed some discrepancies, but then again, I don't know if that was just failure on my scope's behalf. If it was just in, or in the process of just jacking up. I don't know what to say, but I do know for a fact I'm adding power. It's shorting out. You don't hear any audible clicks. I think what happened with this GM is that the transmission control module is or the PCM needs to be replaced because it damaged the logic board because of that shorted solenoid and it broke my freaking scope. So I'm gonna go and cry because I gotta shell out five hundred dollars, but hopefully it just need to update. Hopefully I can send it off and get it fixed. So I just went on here and took the board apart, see what I had going on. And I think this is the A one. Look how loose that is. I did a resistance test in some of the terminals and uh, this has just been falling off and getting worse. Pretty sure it's not safe for me to have this circuit board on my pants, or conductor. But yeah, I'm gonna desolder this and see if maybe I can get it to come back online. I mean, the worst thing, I mean, I did have to send this off once before. I mean, this is what it looks like. I mean, they, they had to have been repaired before. And I'd imagine if this is shorting out, then it's probably knocking the rest of them offline because it has to get a value from each of these terminals, I'd imagine. But I don't know how it would affect the overall board and the value of the computer. I'll sit there and think about it. Unless this shorted out and then it just damaged another component in here. But I don't know what in the world they would be repairing. What else is inside of here? I don't know. This is obvious though. Like a loose tooth. I was trying to find these online because if this is the problem, if I separate this and it works, then I can just buy it and solder it in myself. Let's see if I can find it. I just need to extract the part number some way. So I pulled it off. I desoldered it. And uh, it didn't make any difference. So this, the four, the center one is the connection for the positive, the ground is going to be the housing here, and those are the four anchors on the outside that support it. So that's the bulk of keeping this male stable. Probably considered a female, but it looks like a male. And come to find out, the problem was over here. D was loose and it worked. Sort of. I never use D. They don't sound right. But this is beyond my scope. No pun intended. So I'm just going to have to buy a new one. And hope that that is the fix. And I never have to return it. And I'll be in good shape. So see ya.
All right, it's been a few days later, and as far as the speculation of what I think it is going through a process of elimination in regards to the shifting discrepancy, uh, I think it's a computer. Uh, I'm just simple as that. I'm, I didn't want to go too far in depth because of, of like testing wiring because I, it's like a logic system. I can't imagine anything outside of that. I didn't want to make anything more complex than what it is. I just want to keep things simple. So I do have a computer. I got it from AutoZone. My home store O'Reilly's did not have one available. This is a completely remanufactured. It was very, very reasonable. Uh, where is it? At? Uh, I thought I probably had the name here. Let me cut this open. Here's a new computer. Factory Delphi completely remanufactured, so completely whatever that means. So, I'm gonna I want to show you something else that I found inside the transmission control module PID data. And I want to this is one of the things I want to see change because I know this bit of information had to have been a major contributor to why it only transitioned from first to second. It was the transmission fluid pressure sensor. And it was stuck on two. There we go. Yeah, transmission fluid pressure switch drive two. So I think that had a lot to do with it. And again, it's logic. I disc. What I wound up doing that I didn't document in the video was I disconnected the transmission engine harness, and it still stayed the same. And the only thing I can think of is brain. This it's in the computer system. Okay, and now I can manually shift it from uh first to second to third and it, it whatever it still will only stay it will only go to drive two so there's no command to go anything beyond that i had a transmission video i just did on a um forward transit and that command state right here is it's still just two you know this should change so when I change this, hopefully this goes to park or, I don't know, four or something, and it gets out of two. I don't know what the static state is, and uh, we can go from there. So I'm going to shut up. We're going to get this computer installed and see exactly what happened. I ain't going to lie, I'm nervous. You know, modules are the last thing that you would want to replace in efforts to resolve a problem, but based off of what i know i know this computer was bad based off of what i tested the solenoid was shorted out um, i did order a new oscilloscope that should be here today as far as the mp408 mp408 yeah for the for the all tail i just went ahead and ordered a new one for like 500 dollars. i'm going to take the one that i got send it off as i start a um, work order send it off and get that repaired so i just have to i just don't want to keep having to go through this and i'll rather have a backup I like the Alltel product because it's cheap, but you, I don't have a look with technology, man. I swear, things are gonna work out for me. So let's 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 get this computer out. The computer resides in the airbox, and I kind of already got it pulled out. I'm gonna zoom through this. There was an eight millimeter. So I pulled those out, and uh, the intake hose just slide right out. Take the filter housing. And then we'll have the computer exposed. For the most part, it just sits in there, tucked away. There it go. So, yeah, trust me, you're not you're not missing much. Got an eight millimeter. That's not an eight. That's going to be a seven millimeter. Transmission. Dun dun dun. I either screwed up. Ah, oh, still have that command gear. I wonder if it's because it's um. I probably just need to start up, clear the code, see if anything changes. Less um. Let me see something.
again, if I disconnect it, nothing changes. It stays in, stays in command gear two. Let me start up because it might just be a default or something. I don't know. I want to get this in here. All right, we're going to go back to the, let's back to this cloud screen. Let's go back to the transmission. There was some codes in here. Um, I don't know how it would have stored codes if the computer's new. Let me start it up right quick. Oh, wait, that has changed. That's weird. You see it went to gear three and then back to two. Car won't start. Hey, security. It's in park. There, security light on. Let me see the security lights on. I probably need to go to the pass lock procedure. Yeah, security light. Let me just leave the key on for a while and then I'll get it started because I think the car's getting stolen. So just turn the key off and off, off and on for seven minutes. Yeah, just leave it on. I got a battery charger on it. Just gonna let it do its thing. Hmm. But it should have been programmed to the vehicle. But then again, it is what it is. So this did go to three, but then it dropped back to two. Hmm. Let me see if there's any code. Because there was some transmission codes in here. Let me see if they're still present. If, I don't know how it would be. It shouldn't be any codes in it at all because it's a different computer. That's the only place it's going to be stored. I mean, why would a code be stored in a body control module? Oh. Okay, that ain't no big deal. Theft deterrent. So, yeah. I'm going to let this do its thing. And uh, I'll be back in seven minutes. It's been... Uh-oh. Let's see. It's been... It's been about 15, 20 minutes. I can't get a good view on it. There you go. It's been about 15 minutes. Security lights is off. Oh. I think we can see what we got going on now. Turn the key off. Let me go to the live data out of curiosity because I did go into the theft portion in the body control module to see if there was I just want to see it for myself and see what live data shows theft wise security. Okay. Okay. There you go. Security lamp stayed off. All right. Let's start up. Are you serious? Why ain't it starting up? Uh, I might have to go through another round of it. It is what it is. All right, here's attempt number two. Nope, nothing. So let it sit again. All right, security light just went off. Attempt number three. I think I probably should just kept on trying to turn it over. No. Okay, here's the fourth attempt. I'm just going to turn the key forward. Well, I know one guy said he held for five seconds and it eventually started, but I don't think this is going to happen. No. Trash control. Battery. Nope. Oh, what the hell is going on with this? I got the old computer back in there and it starts up. No problem. Man, something must have happened. I'm programming an installation or something. I checked the VIN number in the computer and it was. It was the same. This module must be programmed with the vehicle VIN. Maybe require a relearn. 
I put the van in there. Let me see what I, if I can, let me try it again. Let me see what I can do if I, because the van is supposed to be in here, uh, I'd imagine. Maybe it isn't, so. Let me see what I, what my options are. I don't know. I, I swear this is supposed to have the VIN number and the computer. I checked the VIN and the PCM and it's in there. And uh, this wasn't surprising, it's Blue Streak. That's crazy because Blue Streak has parts at O'Reilly's Auto. And this is AutoZone. AutoZone also buys stuff from Keystone. I think we're getting bamboozled, people. All the part stores are in it together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call them tomorrow. See what I gotta do. I, I even come with the relearn procedure in order to initiate a relearn. Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't know what the I'm doing. I'll try some other stuff. Let me see if I can get this started, and I'll be back. I'm gonna keep this video going too terribly long for nonsense. Well, how about that? I got it started. So I went through a couple cycles and I, I what I didn't do was leave the key off for 10 seconds so yeah that was my fault all right let's keep on with our test and see what we got that's because of the um air temp sensor I'll do a crank relearn shortly so next time I don't I just rarely have to go through this procedure I just didn't leave the key off for 10 seconds and uh, that caused our problems. Let me let's go let's go ahead and go to the transmission. Let me roll this window up. Um, let's go back. Let's go to powertrain. Uh, live data. Transmission live data. I was messing with this for like two hours. Last well, about an hour and a half. Let's see. Okay, cool. Look at this. Fix. Look at that. Gear command one. Booyah. This is great. All right, let me get my stuff back together, take it on test drive, and watch this thing's transition. All right, I'm just going to, before I do this, I'm just going to go to a crank relearn. Uh, it's simple. Usually you just rev it up. That's all I got to do. Oh shoot, waiting for cool temperature. But uh, that's usually all I gotta do. I just gotta wait for the vehicle to probably hit normal operating temperatures uh, as it states. Waiting for coolant engine temperature. Uh, I'll just pretty much do this, but this is just the basic crank uh, relearn procedure. It's nothing special. You go into the feature and it just has you, yep, there. All right, brake must be applied. Let's see if it'll let me do it. All right, let me try it again, see what happens. I had to go into closed loop lightly. I didn't read any instructions because they're all similar. That's probably why I didn't do it because I didn't hold a brake. Wide open throttle, test in progress. I did. There you go. I had to hold the accelerator pedal. What the fuck? Uh -oh. Okay. Cool, that's it. Alright, that's awesome. So I had to hold the uh, pedal down until it hit that rev limiter twice. Alright, let's go into the and check engine light went off. I didn't have to clear anything. Let's go into live data. Transmission live data. And then we're going to put it. Oh, it went into drive a lot more smoother too. So we're just going to focus on gear, gear command. I'm not worried about anything else. So before it was just stuck in two, now it's actually commanding the transition. There's two. We should see three. We 
should see three. No three. Oh wow. Huh. Let me try manually shifting it. See what happens. So it's not working. It's still going. It's still just standing too. I have to look back at the computer. Uh, at the computer, look at the footage. Cause maybe it did state command gear one and then transition into. But there's no predetermined state to go to three, and that's what I'm just like. This is a computer problem. How in the world would anything else outside the fact that the brain commands? and the car or component reflects because it had, just like the transition to two it commanded the gear to two and it performed it should do the same in the sequential order this is not happening <laughs> my feelings hurt i don't want to sit there and chase my ass like the solenoids or something is damaged or compromised but i wonder if because that solenoid shorted out, will I have to? Hmm. Will I have to check my wiring integrity? I don't. I don't understand how that would mess up anything outside the realm of the wiring system. I mean, we we tested the wires, so we know we know for a fact one was shorted. Um. I mean, it, it did, the cylinder didn't have any operation. I would have to check the solenoids themselves and see if I can command it through the computer here. I'm gonna do that in another video, but I'm not. I'm not gonna like not do this video because shit didn't go my way. Um, we're. I'm just gonna keep this simple and just have to do like a part two. So hit that link, subscribe to the channel, stay informed, head over to my work, and I'll see you on the next one.